Mansion play, obviously. We went to the Playboy Mansion. <coughs> that was fun. The reason why I wanted to take the time to break down the structure and to tell you about the, uh, the patterns of interaction is because you guys, I'm sure, have tons of stories to tell me, certain things that happened and, uh, and took place that if you just threw me stories of like, what happened here, what happened here? I want to build a structure around those stories. In other words, I'd like you to speak, if you can, in my language so I can understand it. Meaning, if you've got a sticking point somewhere, right, one of these, I want to know where it is. A1, we open. Did you have a problem in an opening with a certain set? A2, in demonstrating higher value, right? Negging, you have the neg at, uh, in A2 simultaneously, DHV. In A3, we now qualify her. Okay, what do you got going for you in your looks? And what happens there, of course, is my job is to draw out of her DHV spikes so that I can give her IOIs. A2 and A3 are mirror opposites. Very elegant, really. Then, of course, we have to do a move. There's a move that takes place somewhere in A3. Physically move them, and that's a phase, you know? You see me grab a girl by the hand, and I'm walking her 60 feet to the cabana, right? I'm doing little calibrations in the hand. I raise my hand up high like this to see if her hand stays in mine. Now I'm uncomfortable cool that must be for her to be going through the crowd with her hand up high, right? Just to see if she's going to still do it, and I can lower it. You can do uh, this type of hand holding. Is, she, is her hand open like this, or is she holding tight? All these little keno tests, these little compliance tests. tests are happening during the move. And it happens sometime in A3, right? I'm going to sit down into a C1 location. You've seen me do that. And then, of course, uh, from C1 to C2, you're either going to bounce or you're going to, uh, which means to go from one location to the next, or you're going to time bridge. And you're going to bridge the time you're apart so you can be together again. And that usually means getting a phone number. And also, there are two sides to every time bridge. Not only a phone number, you will get together sometime, but the other side as well, why you're getting together. And just make sure that when you invite her out to get together with her again, that you don't say, uh, you know, maybe we can get together for coffee or something. See, what you're doing is you're setting aside your time for her. And that's an un uncomfortable uh, situation to be in. Right? And it also lowers your value. Instead, what you want to do is say, well, I'm doing this. Why don't you come tag along with me? Draw her into your world. Right? And if she can't do it, you can offer a couple. Well, you know, either on Wednesday, I'm getting together with some friends of mine over at the Standard. Uh, it's industry night, so uh, my friends and I are going to party there. Or on Thursday, I'm heading over to the Magic Castle. Uh, perhaps you'd like to you know, dress up and, uh, and you know, Come tag along on that. That's uh, a good time. So you give them a couple options. But those are things you're doing anyway, with or without her. That's a good time bridge, right? So we don't really have to talk about anything further today, right? We want to get, for tonight, as far as opening, attraction, A3, qualifying her, getting the move successfully taking place so that I can move her into uh, a backwards merging sit-down location so I can with comfort, with keno escalation, uh, arm in arm, we now get to know each other in C1, and then I can get a phone number, time bridge, or I can bounce her to another location that night. That's as far as we have to go, right? Then C2, of course, is your day two, oftentimes, the next time you see her. And finally, C3 is your living room, and you just move her into arousal. Then last minute resistance issues will take place and uh, ultimately sex. First time sex is, is, you know, it's a big thing for some girls. It's a, something that should be handled with uh, comfort and tact and, and, and it should be fun and playful and, and a lot of people don't know that. So we'll talk about all that stuff tomorrow. But now that we have this structure and you understand how I view the holodeck metaphor, what happened guys? Come on, tell me. You guys definitely had fun. I know that. I want to start with you, man. Oh, me? 
What happened? It was, uh, <laughs> what, um, where do I start? I mean, well, where do you start with that porn star girl? Uh, <laughs> well, she was, if you're so inclined to rating women, would you rate her green? <laughs> I would rate her green. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. A big T target on <laughs> floating in, uh, in front of her? Yeah. 